Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, we're back on the road. Finally, it's getting hot in Yuma. It was hitting like 90 degrees dang near every day. As you can see, Pearl's smiling. She's behind the wheel. And uh, that's one of her favorite places to be. We're headed up to Spring Creek, Nevada. That's just outside of Elko. Spent some time with our daughter and son-in-law. We've got several projects. Our son-in-law is pretty mechanical, and he's always a great guy to have around to lead me through these projects. But before we got on the road, Pearl had to have some dental work done. She had about, uh, I think it's almost $4,000 worth of dental work done. But it would have cost over twenty thousand if we'd had it in the states, and so so far, she's pretty darn happy. With it. So we went to uh, uh, Amigo. Amigo's dental. Amigo what? Dental. Amigo, yeah, Amigo Dental. Would you recommend them? Sure. They were pretty good, huh? Very good, very kind. Enjoy. And uh, sanitary. Yes. Everything seemed to be good. Yeah, very good. And the. Uh, they seem to do you. Give us a smile. <laughs> <You're so funny. laughs> We've got some uh, bad weather, some 30 to 40 mile an hour winds with gusts up to they're saying 60 and 70 miles. So we may have to hold up. Uh, we want to get to Elko as quick as we can, but we may hold up here in Alamo, Nevada, if we can get that far. Uh, we may have to stop at a roadside park. I don't know. So come along, let's see how it goes, and uh, let's get up to Elko. So we found a couple of places that we might pull over and weather out the storm, but we talked about it every time and decided to just keep going. <laughs> but it did bounce us around and knock some stuff out of the cabinets. But we made it to Alamo, but we hunkered down for three days at Alamo. That was about 400, halfway, about 420 to 30 miles. The wind's starting to pick up. It's blowing maybe 20 or something. It's not near as strong as they forecast. We were going to pull the slides in, but we replaced one, two, and then three of our four slides of the toppers, and they're holding up pretty good. Their uh, back one's flopping a little bit, and then the front one, I guess, is sheltered a little bit. It's not moving hardly at all. So we might get to leave the slides out. But it, yeah, it's. It's a blowing. That went going a little bit, but it's a whole lot better than it used to be. And then that topper's been on for several years and it's pretty tight, doing pretty good. Looks like there's snow up in them mountains. Can you see yeah, that? There it is. Well, up in them mountains up there, more or less. Yeah. Dead ahead of us. Right out of it. But we're going to go around them. Is that, I guess, the Ruby Mountains, huh? And uh, finally the wind calmed down. We got there Friday night. Pearl went to the dentist on Thursday. We left on Friday. Got to Alamo Friday night. And we left Monday morning. And we still had some wind and snow and rain to get through. So we're just outside of Ely, Nevada. The roadside park. This thing was full last night. Had a little snowstorm come in this morning, so we're getting a late start. Back the Jeep up like this, so it was so full, we was a little concerned about some of our stuff disappearing. Not that that would help a whole lot. But it's a nice, good sized park. We're ready to hit the road. Hopefully, we don't run into any more snow. Definitely some clouds out there, some wind. Well, we're getting our snowstorm. We diced it all morning, but we finally, you got a piece of it, huh? Well, unfortunately, we got a little bit too much of a piece of it. <laughs> but we got to uh, Elko, and then our kids are about 20 miles south of Elko by uh, Monday afternoon. So all the bad weather blew through pretty quick. And we, it was 70 degrees in just a day or two, and the wind was down to just a few miles an hour. We smoked us up some tri-tip, which we've cooked all kind of great meals. But we had everybody over, uh, Ronnie and Melissa, our daughter, son-in-law, Alex, our grandson, his wife, Nicole, 
and then our great granddaughter Charlotte. Super good time. And one thing that we really enjoy is Ron, he just retired, had a retirement party. He's got this big old shop. He used to be a diesel mechanic. He builds hot rods, paints them, he modifies them, uh, everything you can think of. He's got this huge shop, and now he just opened up a metalworks business in his retirement. So uh, let me show you what he did for us this trip. Yeah, that looks pretty rough now. I guarantee you it'll look like it just come off the showroom floor here in about a month. Take this exit done. and kind of put it on here so you got you know, like an E, X, I, and T. So he gets on his computer and it's pretty much like the video editing software that I use. He uh, got the word next and then exit and then drew in this Jeep with the trees and stuff. Uh, he did. I did uh, alert him that those grill things need to be up and down. Needs to be seven of them for a Jeep. I'm a slow learner, but I got that part. But he did all that and then he sent it over to his plasma table on a piece of uh, 10 gauge steel. I think that's a little more than an eighth of an inch thick. It's heavy. Uh, and cut it out. And it just looks awesome. So a lot of you guys are pretty smart and pretty perceptive, but I'd like to know when you figure out just exactly what Ronnie's making. I'm not gonna tell you, you're gonna have to wait and see, but uh, let me know down in the comments. Tell me at what point do you did you figure out what this is? I bet not many of you get it. We uh, we then took it down to the local uh, metal shop here in town in Elko. Yeah. Okay. Is that even? Uh, I'll get it. I'll, oh, okay. And Ronnie's used to being in charge, so he jumped right in there. We didn't have a big enough break in his shop. So he was going to bend it himself, and the guy said, no, no, I'll, I'll take care of that. But the guy bent it for us, put it in, I think we needed like an uh, 87 degree bend, something like that. Put that in there, we brought it back to the shop, painted it. And we put the piece of plywood and let the bolts stick into these holes to keep it up off of my rubber mat. Okay, that's your hand up. Come on now, be honest. If you've been watching our videos, you might have figured out that we needed to bolt down that uh, set power slide for our set power refrigerator. I just didn't want to drill holes in the pickup bed. And Ronnie had a great idea. So it comes out pretty right cool. on. Yeah, right the ride's right on that, so your height is good. Perfect, yeah. With. Well, we got our space on the wheel well nicely yeah got a quarter of an inch of them so yeah we got some space there we didn't have to grind that you can kind of see that there's something on there uh -huh. if you have somebody here going hey what is that let me pull this out let me pull it out oh okay so this will be off i can move all this over to there oh you can sit from then, here and you can just this. then you can see what's back there so our set power refrigerator freezer Slide out. Working great, Ronnie. And set power cool. slide out. And that four inch hole lined up just perfect with your power the out. The power, yep. So now we got our logo bracket for the uh, set power refrigerator. We're getting all excited about our next camping trip. And Melissa, our daughter, told us about Jarbage, Nevada. Up here in the mountains, about 100 miles north of Spring Creek. And uh, it's the most isolated town in the lower 48 states. You go like 50 miles on the paved road, and then it's another 40 miles or something on a dirt road. Up in the mountains, way up high. And it looks like a really neat town. About 50 people live there. But I had the bright idea. Let's go up 
and then cut across it. We'll go to Wild Horse Reservoir and then cut all the way through the mountains. And that takes us over, I think it's 8,000 feet, 8,200 feet. It's early in the season. We should be able to find a great camping spot. It ought to be just perfect. So, uh, Ronnie said, what you need is to get you a lift kit and raise your Jeep up, get some bigger tires. And we knew that. We wanted to do that. And in talking to Ronnie, he said, that's easy to do. I can put that in in an afternoon, just a few hours. So we ordered it from... Uh, one of the online companies said, said we could get it in two days, maybe three days, I think. Two days FedEx. So we ordered it, Pearl and I loaded up, and headed to Charby. Figuring that when we got back, we'd be able to install the lift kit and maybe even look for some tires. And we weren't disappointed. This uh, trail was awesome. It's called the uh, Purple Pancakes Fly at Midnight. Some, <laughs> I don't know where it come from, but it's simply awesome. We were up in the mountains, we even got to splash through some snow, and we found the most awesome campground. We ended up staying an extra day just because it was, uh, we had to pull ourselves away. Lost again, going back around. Dreaming of a time when I get things right. Lost in the shadows of a million stars. Shouldn't they invite a just tell me where you are Send a prayer if I'm out of luck Send a little love and I'll make it back Send me a letter and a bottle of wine Telling me I will be fine Baby, I'm stuck saw that jeep in the water that was our first warning and i'm here to tell you it got just a little bit more sketchy as the further we went we were pretty happy until we left camp we had about 12 or 15 miles to get to jarbage and i'm going to save that for our next video you're going to be surprised we were surprised i'll put it that way and i don't know if it's good or bad but when we got back to spring creek we had a notice, I got a text from Estes Trucking Company, and I guess the uh, company we bought the, the uh, lift kit from told us wrong. They said we'd get it in two days. Now we're not going to get it till June sometime. June so we called them. We just totally canceled the lift kit. We quit looking for tires. And maybe we don't need to go to some of these places. Maybe we need to stay a stock Jeep and stay on nice, safe trails. After our trip to garbage. Water? Pearl's got her thumb up. <laughs> but the good news is since we didn't put the uh, lift kit on, Ronnie built these uh, tubes for us to put in the back of the Jeep to kind of protect the security of our refrigerator and our generator and other items that we have back in the back. Let me show you that. So you might have noticed earlier I had this yellow cable wrapped uh, all across here. And it's kind of, this tailgate locks whenever our car is locked. So you could still pick up the refrigerator and bring it out uh, if nothing was here. Or our big tubs, and I usually have a big tub of equipment down here. Now I just got these little quick release pins on here, but I can put a lock like I've got on my uh, recovery boards in here and that keeps you from bringing getting anything out of the back of the truck uh, is it foolproof no it'll kind of keep an honest person honest but it's real easy you just pop this out you put a little rubber gasket on it and you slide it out and you weld it top on here and then he weld it up on that one so you know which way to point it and they both come out keeps it from blowing out in the wind keeps somebody from just picking it up and walking away 
and then this is locked when the front door is locked. So it's just pretty cool. I love coming to Spring Creek to seeing the uh, kids. Really? Purple Pancakes Fly at Midnight? That's really the name of this trail. There's got to be a good story behind that. But to be honest, the trail wasn't that bad. It's at number four, rated number four out of ten, which is the, the, a moderate trail. The big red arrow up there, that's where we camped. That could be one of the best campsites Pearl and I have ever spent at. And you'll see it in detail in our next video. Probably won't be the next one. Uh, Ronnie's going to go to Alaska in July. And so the next, our next video is a product review video uh, for some stuff for him to take up to Alaska. But the following, which will only, it's only going to be a week or 10 days probably, because this is going to be such a fun video to do. We'll, we'll tell you about Purple Pancakes Fly at Midnight. So that's our camp, the red dot up there. And then there's one little blue section right after our camp. And that's just some rocks. It's a piece of cake. We're pretty new in all this, but that's a pretty easy trail. And then right over here is just some uh, uh, big ruts. 12 or 15 inches deep. And it's not bad at all. We've kind of learned how to do those things. But they were fun. But as we got over here closer, just right before this big black dot, things got serious. And to be honest, it wasn't life or death, but it uh, potentially could have been. It was, we got in a predicament that I wasn't sure we was going to get out of. But my lovely wife, Pearl, found the answer. So be sure and tune in for that video. It's going to be a week or ten days from now, probably the first of June or something. Purple Pancakes Flat Midnight. Stay tuned for it. I think you'll enjoy it. Until we see you guys again next time. Keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit, folks. Bye-bye.